morning traders welcome to the privateer fx asia wrap or sorry asia preview north american wrap had a uh, pretty interesting risk on day caught us a little bit by surprise after the bearish closes that we saw in as you can see here in the yen crosses here's dollar yen's friday bar the big red bar new low weekly and daily close for the past you know year or so Big powerful but bullish engulfing day-to-day, uh, -day. closed right up, right up near the highs of the day. Um, every every yen cross kind of looks similar to this. Um, extremely powerful days. A lot of this was on the back of the uh, here's euro yen, the trade tensions with China. Munchen came out over the weekend to kind of calm things down. Um, and the equities and the cross yen responded some pretty powerful moves higher. Here's the uh, dollar index is down about a half percent today. It's mainly just cross yen higher. Uh, Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, CAD yen. Uh, some positive NAFTA talk from Navarro. So you had dollar CAD lower on the day, which, you know, pushed CAD yen up. As you can see here. So all these are very constructive uh, up days. Uh, one thing that I caught my attention was the uh, Let's go down and find NASDAQ and, uh, and, and some of the high-flying stocks. Even Facebook uh, looks like it closed up small in the day. Here's the S&P 500. Um, sold off briefly on the Asian Open yesterday. Respecting this 200-day moving average, again, as it did back here in February. This is a huge level. When we break it, I think it's going to be lights out. In the meantime, I think you have to uh, look to fade made some rallies maybe not just yet uh, we do have month end quarter end rebalancing where we're still trying to get our head around what what they're going to need to do but uh, nasdaq's up on the month a couple percent or on the quarter a couple percent s p's are down a little bit um, global indices are down across the board here's the nasdaq very powerful um, that hurt some of the individual equity shorts that I have on uh, are taking a little bit of pain. Here's Tesla, one that we've been talking about for a while. Huge bounce here. We took out this old February low, another low from back in uh, November, 290, yet then closed up here at 304. Um, so that one. Uh, that one stung a little bit, but uh, you know we're still in the sell rally modes in equities. I, I do think that the new quarter is going to bring some structural breakages on the momentum and some price breakages that uh, we want to be playing for lower prices. So that's a tough one to fight, especially any of the FANG stocks or high flyers like Tesla. But uh, you know we've got uh, positions on you know more for May and June via options so we'll sit we'll, we'll sit through some pain on the top side um crypto's a lot of under a lot of pressure ethereum down 10 percent bitcoin was down 10 percent at one point um trading heavy still um here's ethereum really just can't bounce at all we had that low earlier in the month um was that last week i guess down to 452 on that. That was that Sunday, um, you know, taking out that old February low, or no, it was a December low. They look really heavy. And if you look at what's going on cross asset class, they are buying gold and silver. Here they are. Here's gold up 0.25%. Silver had a powerful day. They're buying gold and silver and they're selling. Um, here we are closing right on this FIBO, selling cryptos, which is kind of interesting. Um, not sure what the correlation is these days, but uh, that makes me worried when I see gold and silver really perky and, you know, on a breakout above uh, these old highs here at 1342. Um, this seems to be a, more of a technical break, but when they're buying gold and silver, dollar yen is higher on the day one of them's wrong 
Um, as far as event risk, uh, there's no real economic data of importance coming out in the next, uh, you know, next day. We have some consumer confidence number. It is the start of uh, a lot of U.S. spring breaks, so liquidity is a premium. Um, the volumes should be lower. This equity rally today was actually fairly decent volume from what I was reading. You know, the VIX down 15%. That's a you know, that's a pretty powerful move lower. Um, but the main risk today for your session, um, the, for the Asian session, is the Sagawa testimony, which is in a couple hours' time. I would be paying very close attention to this. Um, there's not a lot of, I haven't seen any bank research, but some of our independent thinkers that we subscribe to are talking about, um, you know, it being a, a binary event. Uh, if Sagawa falls on the sword, so to speak, and takes the blame for doctoring these, this land deal, this Abe and Abe's wife land, land, uh, school land deal that's been in the press, and there are the Japanese have been protesting, um, and you've seen his uh, obvious approval rating drop dramatically. If he falls on the sword, if Sagawa falls on the sword, takes the blame, I think we'll see a, a decent spike up in dollar yen. Um, it's, you know, it's pretty oversold. However, on the flip side, if um, somehow Abe is implicated or some high-level MOF officials, maybe an ASO. Um, is implicated, that's going to be pretty risk off. And uh, then you start having to worry about Abe stepping down, which then throws a wrench into this whole Abenomics that's been going on now for years. And uh, we think the yen would appreciate, and that would bring dollar yen down, you know, close to the 100 level over the next month or so as things unravel. So pay close attention to that this evening uh, or this morning for you. Uh, we'll be in front of the screens and, uh, and watching how things develop during this uh, during this testimony with Sagawa. Other than that, pretty uh, pretty quiet economic calendar. So uh, good luck trading, and we will speak to you on the European Open. Good luck. Cheers.